you said a great thing this morning, Ian, when you were talking about the uh, multi-scale aspect. Somebody, somebody asked you about the modeling of the devices and why we need to work with folks in material science and in chemical engineering and so forth. And you remember what you said. <laughs> Not exactly, but it is quite the issue because we're dealing with needing to implement devices that make decisions in short time frames, like you know, even minutes to hours, but depending on how you operate them, they have consequences over lifespans of 10 years. If you get that, that short-term operation wrong, it's going to cost you in the, in the long run. So how to capture that long-run economics in some mechanism that guides the, the, the short decision-making time, that, that's a challenge. Is, uh, is, uh, is it made even more difficult because uh, the ground's moving under us, the rules of the game are changing. So if we look at today's system, it's going to be very different than what we have 10, 20, 30 years from now. Yeah, and I think yeah, you made some really good points about if the policy keeps moving, you don't know what, what the right capability should be for the devices because you, you don't know how to operate them to make, you know, ultimately people want to make money out of this stuff. But if those rules keep changing, that's so, a real challenge. So the rules change, the technology is changing. Um, you know, we really need this meeting to get a glimpse of what things might look like, you know, what, what the students uh, 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 the engineering science side are working on now, which might be reality in five or ten years. The, uh, the economics are changing, uh, world economics, prices of fuels, uh, uh, and the, of course the climate is changing. Well, you know, the whole reason that we're doing this, um, this is a lovely cool day, but in some other parts of this country or the temperatures are hot and getting hotter and they're dealing with storms. We don't want them all moving up here, we're <laughs> doing something technological. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's so many different pathways that things could go. You know, and to evaluate all of those possibilities is a massive engineering and, and computational task. Um, you know, I think you would agree that just the computations that underpin the work that you present today are an enormous amount of uh, computing power that's required to, to achieve that. Uh, that, and that's without taking into account the micro-scale aspects, that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what's going on in the battery chemistries that's being influenced by the way that we're charging or discharging the batteries. Uh, what's going on in the solar cells that uh, cause them to, to lose their efficiency prematurely, those sorts of things as well. You know, massive computational requirements there, modeling emissions, all the way through. So even if you're modeling just the day, one day's operation, or even just the next couple of hours, the, your computational problems are very challenging. And the problems I look at were, okay, what are we going to build now that's going to be in place in 20 years? I kind of have to think, kind of have to integrate over all that, not just your next two hours, but how will tomorrow be different? How will 10 years from now be different? So in a sense, I, um, I have to think about the same problems you do. So that's the multi-scale issue. Yeah, yeah from seconds within the device to hours and operations to yeah. decades uh, for policy and investment. Yep.